I'm going to go through this again real quick. Um, uh, welcome, everybody. Well, tonight, um, got a couple things. Number one, have you guys heard about the South Carolina gun shop owner who mistakenly thought that he was pointing a BB gun Glock, okay, Glock that was actually a, a BB gun or a pellet gun at his friend's head who was a... Uh, Previously was a special forces sniper for 15 years. He was in the military and uh, supposedly a really good guy. We'll, we'll get into that. Uh, I want to talk about that, man. Uh, but if you guys haven't heard about it, we're definitely going to talk about it tonight. And, uh, and we'll talk about some little written house stuff and stuff like that because I wanted to catch up with you guys and see how's everybody, how everybody's doing tonight. All right. Alan Power, Real AP. What's going on, my brother? Um... So, let us know, man, um, if you can, all right, uh, I can go on Discord maybe and post those up, all right? Alan Powell's been, it's been churning out some really cool stuff, uh, specifically like stuff to uh, hang up your Glock, 3D printed stuff to hang up your, your Glock, you hang up your uh, AK, hang up your AR-15, hang up your magazines. So, you're printing some really cool stuff out. It's been on my Discord, uh, our Discord channel, it's a Warthog community on Discord. So... Uh, and I want to buy a few, bro, so, uh, I'll try to pull up Discord over here and then throw up some pictures of what you got over there, right? Uh, I do not have it. I got changed my, my passwords and stuff on Warthog71 on my email, so don't send it to that e e email. If you do, it's a, I see it on the Discord. If you have anything else you want to post, post it on the Discord while we're, while we're doing this, and I'll pull it up on the Discord, and I'll, I'll put it up here tonight, all right? Son, 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 what's going on, man? My favorite gamer, brother. Sim former Big Joe, what's happening, my brother? Shrimpy Muscles, hey, from Kentucky. What's going on, man? Red October. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah, eventually, I'm going to be back, you know? Gunny79, man. Yes, it has been a while, brother. It has been a while, man. Pedo Joe got to go immediately, bro. But, in the, but but about to crash. I'm drunk already. <laughs> be cool down there, man. Be cool, right? I hope it's not too warm down there for you, you know? All right. Let's see. S2 Power with Sean. What's going on, my brother? Yes, definitely good to see everyone. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm pouring myself segregation noon. <laughs> Andrea, what's going on? Yes, I saw you on Twitter. Followed you back on Twitter. Fantastic. Um, I don't even really know. I think Warthog71 on Twitter or Real Warthog71 on Twitter. Something like that, you know. On other forms of social media, somebody's taking Warthog71 and happens so i'm like look for real warthog 71 or just w71 uh if you look it on any other forms of social media if you if you're you know interested in finding me so uh robin sage what's going on how are you robin let's see as soon as my strip lower comes in all right i'll be doing another build this one's for my dad's chris absolutely definitely bro post pictures up on the, on the discord okay if you are not on the discord um, Sean, uh, S2 Palletwood, uh, I'm sure he could post a link in here, uh, because, uh, I think I might have a link in here somewhere. Let's see, I might be able to post a link. I'll put a link in the description, uh, for the, uh, for our, this is our Discord channel, so which is pretty cool. And, uh, I've been popping in on it, making comments, stuff like that, but I want to get back to doing lives on that, where we could actually talk to one another, which is a lot of fun. And, uh, but yeah, Joe, definitely looking forward to that new build. Uh, I am... Interestingly, you know, speaking of builds, so my last build, uh, well, my last two, one was the 22. I did the uh, BCA uh, video on that. Haven't really done a video on the 11 and a half inch BCA side charger that I got. But I will tell you, man, um, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. 5.56. Five, and on top of that, now I was on BCA's website last night because they offer some really awesome deals. You know, I mean, like getting 10% off, 15% off, 20% off. They are affordable. And I don't care what people call them, the pores or whatever. They want to get nitpick and pull out their damn Harbor Freight tools to take it apart. Uh, it's just ridiculous. You know, some of the videos that it, and the reviews that I see on there. They put out, hey, it's affordable. It gets the job done. Are you going to put it on a full auto lower and start rattling it off? You know, like the idiot VSO channel with the 458 so calm or whatever he did. And we, why would we take a hunting round and make it full auto? How does that make any sense at all? But that's neither here nor there. I have found, uh, I'm actually, probably tonight I'll order it. Uh, 
6.5 Creedmoor. I've been wanting a 6.5 Creedmoor upper. I have, when I shoot 6.5 Creedmoor, I shoot it, I have a bolt action Ruger. So uh, I like to shoot it in a bolt action. But I do want a 6.5 Creedmoor in semi-automatic. Why not? We should all have one, right? My point being is that $265. They've got them for 264 and 269. They've got with a sporter, what they call a sporter billet upper that doesn't have any uh, uh, forward assist. It doesn't have any brass deflector or anything like that on it. Uh, it is a rear charger, which I do for a 6.5 Creedmoor. I do want a rear charger. Just in case I have any issues, I like side charging. I'm kind of digging their new Gen 2. However, for a larger frame, I would rather a rear charger, and here's the only reason why. If I have an issue with a failure to eject, let's say, for example, stuck case, all right? What do you do in the case of a stuck case? What do you do in the case of a stuck case? You mortar it. It's a lot more difficult to mortar it if you're holding a side charger, okay? Then mortaring it, you just hold it right back at the charger handle and mortar it in order to get that damn stuck case out, if that'll work for you. So there you have it there, you know? All right, what's going on? There we go, Sean. That's it right there, man. All right, so guys, if you, you uh, copy and paste that, join the Discord right there, man. Jump on it, man. We have a lot of fun. Guys are posting every single day on it. And this is, they shut us down on here. We have another place that we can uh, uh, all keep together. Plus, you guys get to know each other, you know, guys and girls and stuff like that. You get to know each other. When I say guys, I mean guys, girls, and, you know, all whatever pronoun you want to call yourself. I don't give a shit rat's ass about that shit. <sighs> Still haven't bought any of my parts for my uh, G26. I just did a G26 build last night. I would show it to you guys, but I cannot. Um, but I will take some pictures of it. And uh, had a little couple issues with it. Um, I did check it out. Uh, Sean, I called up actually Sean because he built two. And I had a... Still, they're always quirky. Uh, when you're building a Polymer 80. Let me tell you something. This is what they get me when they talk about... Uh, ghost guns. They build them and they put them out on the street and you start shooting people right away. Ghost guns. Yeah, well, um, nobody talks about the part where uh, you may be having to file down a, a, a slide in this place or that place or you have to really go to work on it that it is not easy to put together one of these things, okay? I mean, it, it's not hard to put together once you know what you're doing. But my point is... You've got to work it. And I don't have the luxury of building something and walking out back and popping off 50 rounds to really break it in. So I really got to break it in before I take a half hour drive to go and shoot it someplace. I need to, you know, you don't want to get there. I'm like, ah, this damn thing don't work. I'm going to spend the whole afternoon trying to fix it there. Negative. Not happening, you know. Ah, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Oh, my God. We've got Big channels on here tonight. Real, real big channels on here. Alaska Ballistics. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? If you want to jump on... All right, listen. Anybody, if you want to jump on live and you have an internet connection, tell me. I will send you a link and you're more than welcome to join the discussion live if you want to go with your cell phone, with your camera. You can block it off if you don't want to show your picture or something like that. We could just hear your voice. If you want to jump on, let it. Let me know and I will uh, send me... Uh, let me know. I'll put up my phone number just send me a link uh to my phone number here and i will send you a um blah, blah, blah. send me your email address or whatever send me your email address via my phone number that i'll throw up right here okay and for you guys that don't have it are looking on a small screen like pedo joe gotta go told me about this uh then you can uh Shoot me a text with your email address, and I will shoot you a link if you want to jump on and you want to go live, and I'll throw you up here on the screen, and we can talk about stuff. Because there's a couple of things I want I do want to talk about tonight. You know, EVK, what's going on? I see EVK over there. The bolt goes forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, have you guys watched that that film? Um, uh, 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 the harder they fall. You know, black western. You know, there were a lot of great, uh, not so known black cowboys. Okay, you got to remember something. Um. Los Angeles, by the way, when Los Angeles was actually starting to become populated, the city of Los Angeles, it was a town back then, and you know, but when that area began populated, probably 30 to 40 percent of it were at, in the beginning, almost half of it were actually African Americans. Uh, there were always you know, up north uh, a lot of Chinese because of the railroads and stuff like that going on up there. They've been there, there since the 17th, 18th century, 18th century, I think. 
But my pool, very well made. And Idris Elba, big fan of Idris Elba. I like him a lot, you know. All right, my brother. Catch you, on, catch you on the next time, my man. Michael Henry, what's going on, man? My man from Arkansas, what's going on, man? Going to start a 2250 build for uh, bolt action, or are you going to do that for... Ooh, man, that's a fast, fast round up there in Alaska. If you guys don't know what Alaskan Ballistics are, then you don't even go on the internet. Because this guy, he's got a great channel, man. He's all over the place. He puts out amazing stuff up there in Alaska. And if you want to know how to protect yourself against the bear... This is the first guy that comes to mind, man, because he has, like, bears charging at him and stuff like that. They, they they do some really cool stuff, and he's in the snow, putting the work in, getting it done. You know, my brother, Charlie Mike. All right, going to shoot the... Oh, yeah, so Mike just sent me a picture. You guys picked up a new... Uh, well, you picked it up at MeWe. Guys, go to MeWe. You want to buy a gun in your area? You're looking for something in your area? You want to, you know, if you live in a state where you could go hand-to-hand... All right, you don't have to go to an FFL like in Nazi states. You could just meet up with somebody. Join me. We get on the groups in your area. All right, and from there, uh, you it's like it's I, I go, it's like I do my window shopping on there in every state of the union. I do it. I mean, I'm like every state I do it, and I know somebody. I'm like, yo, man, I'm gonna send you some money, go pick that up, and I'll send it to me, or I'll go, I'll see you when I see you. Uh, but Mike just picked up for about 400 bucks, he picked up a Glock Gen 4 G19. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I might have a picture around it somewhere. I'll have to look for it, you know. Ah, speaking of people from down under, I was thinking of you today, my brother. I was thinking of you today. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that, that shit was funny, right? I, slammed, I just couldn't help myself. I couldn't help myself. Free ride hell driver from S- Sweden? from S- Up north somewhere, Sweden. <laughs> great channel, another great channel. But I was thinking of you today because I was in Ikea today. I'm like, man, these are some really clever folk, man. They, like, make these things, like, some, they come out with some really clever stuff. I was looking for, like, a, um, a shelving unit, you know, like to put for my dog stuff, for dog stuff. Everything's about dogs here. So there we have it. Oh, that's fantastic, bro. Definitely wait. Can't wait to see that video drop on that. That is going to be fantastic. I was thinking of a 243 upper. But I, I will tell you, man, you want to talk about a monster round, man, 2250. That's fast. That's fast. I was thinking about the 2250 as compared. I'm still kind of dawdling it with as as opposed to the 6.5 Creedmoor, you know. Uh, And I can't wait to see your video on why you chose this particular round uh, for a semi-automatic. That's, I, I, guys, go check it out. A lot of great channels on here. Go check everybody out on here, man, you know. Uh, Gary, what's going on, my brother? YouTube's didn't notify me. Damn, I just literally put up the thing like 15, 20 minutes ago, all right? All right, don't curse on my channel. Don't do that. They will Kyle Rittenhouse your ass. Boom, boom, Red Dawn AK-74, what's going on, my brother? All right, so let's go on, let's go ahead real quick, man. Let me just close this out right here, all right? Uh, so if you want to come on, you want to come on live, all right? And, um, you could just cover up your camera or something like that, but you want to be heard, you got opinions, Shoot me. I have my phone sitting right here, so I will get the alert. All right? I'll just make sure it's on right there. I'll get the alert and shit like that, and um, uh, I will send you a uh, I'll send you a link, and you guys are more than welcome to come on. Anybody could come on. Now, I want to talk about this right here first. Let's start off with this. This is pretty horrible stuff right here. And I don't know, man. seems pretty shady. No charges or anything. But let's go ahead. Let's jump right into it, all right? Let's go here. A man is dead after deputies say he was accidentally shot by a gun shop owner in Berkeley County. The owner of Coastal Firearms on Canehorn Road told deputies he mistook a Glock for a BB gun and accidentally shot his friend Stephen Morgan in the face. Morgan later died. These are pictures of the victim that were sent to us by his wife. His wife describes him as a loving father and husband, a sniper in the U.S. Army, and a retired firefighter. The family is shocked and saddened and say they never would have imagined something like this could happen. I think um, most people's first lesson on a firearm includes something that sounds like never point a gun at a person under any circumstance. Like, that's what we taught like my six-year-old stepson you know back when he was little like i don't know it just seems like uh this is such a vast deviation from safety standards because i i feel like sometimes people are like oh oops that's an accident but like he has a four-month-old daughter that'll never get to know him 
So far, no charges have been filed in this case. Let me just stop that right there. Okay, so. So apparently what happened was uh, a witness said that uh, that men were talking normally when he heard a hold up a second. Sorry about that. Let me just stop this. Oops, sorry. Okay. So uh, a witness said that he heard just talking, normal talking behind the counter. Uh, the guy who was shot, all right, whose name is uh, Mr. McGran, all right. And uh, Mr. McGran, Stephen McGran, he was talking with the owner, uh, whose uh, last name is Whitley. And apparently Whitley picked up, now this doesn't make any sense whatsoever, all right, you're talking about a gun shop owner, okay. So the uh, witness said that he heard normal talking, and then he heard a loud bang and saw McGran fall to the ground, all right. The witness ran to McGran, secured uh, McGran's weapon, and began first aid until EMS arrived, um, and he was DOA. He got shot in the face. Uh, with a nine millimeter. All right. The deputies took Whitley's firearms as evidence and conducted a search of the store. The store is temporarily closed, according to signage post, and I'm sure it will never open again. I I, I can't see this guy ever uh, see the ATF pulling his FFL. That's a damn sure. However, um, stranger things have happened, and um, the name of the place is what Coastal Firearms or something like that. It's down in South Carolina. All right, McGran's widow told her that she was in shock. Uh, we just saw her like that. He was a, a retired firefighter, a scuba diver, a husband, dad. He was a veteran. He, for whatever reason, this guy picked up what he thought. Did he have always keep one around? Like, and my whole point is, why would you ever point a weapon Unless you're the prosecutor in Kyle Rittenhouse and you just point the weapon at the entire jury. But that's neither here nor there. Why would you point a weapon at somebody, let alone, and then squeeze the trigger? Even if it was a pellet. Even if a pellet gun that's moving at uh, 460 feet per second on the average, okay? If it's got a brand new uh, uh, little CO2 thing in it, it's got to be around 460, 490. I mean, that would sting and hurt. You take a guy's eye out. But in this case, and on top of all of that, all right, so we already know that. Now, this is a guy that eats, sleeps, and breeds firearms. He sells them for a living. No charges were filed in this. Yet something just doesn't smell right. You know what I mean? I'm sure they're going to do a deeper investigation. I would hope they're going to do a deeper investigation. I'm sure with this leftist... Uh, 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 with, with, with the leftist, I want to say, uh, temperature that we have here, that somebody is going to do it. But the point is, is that the guy picked it up, pointed at him, squeezed the trigger, and the man died. Now, on top of that, so you got a guy who practices a firearm safety for a living. He should because he's an FFL. All right. It's a, it is a gun store. And even though you and I both, we've been in gun stores all the time, people flagging people on a regular, picking it up, looking at the scope, flagging everybody, you know. Uh, but this is just a blatant act of, uh, I, I can't even call it. I can't even say that it's, uh, um, the guy made a mistake. I mean, even a Pelican is dangerous. So on top of that, how can you not know being a professional firearm, this is what you do for a living, can tell the difference between a picking up a loaded Glock and a loaded or whatever it is, pellet gun. Can you not tell the difference in how it feels in your hand? I mean, granted, not everybody's John Wick or whatever, but you can feel the difference. I'm sure you can. So, uh, what do you guys think about that? Let's see what we have. Yeah, it is. Re it is really, really sad. You're right about that. Uh, I, I don't believe the story either. And I'm gonna tell you, man. I had to talk about it. I know it's been on the internet for a few days, but I just been muddling through my mind this is just makes no sense now don't get me wrong i wasn't there i only get what i get from the news so it's not like i actually went down there to you know find out what's going on but just by the way it sounds man it sounds pretty crazy man you know and i agree man it's got to be more it's got to be more to the story it's got to be you know um why would a loaded glock just be lying around in a gun shop and that's another point you know why wouldn't it be on his hip why would it be like it, I can understand being in the gun shop and carrying. I mean, it isn't uh, South Carolina. Uh, I forget about it. Never mind all that. Uh, of course, you can carry if you own, if you have an FFL and you're in a gun shop. You know, John Dobak, what's going on, man? I used Harbor Freight. All right. The tie rod, two of a Titan, an AR-15 barrel nut. Yep. 
Harbor Freight's cool. I was just making him. The reason I said Harbor Freight on that is because in a video that I saw, he was using uh, some cheap, cheap Torx tool, and he was saying that it was stripping his tool. Like the, uh, he was taking apart a BCA upper. But if if that's what you're referring to, but uh, I got some Harbor Freight stuff here, man. You know, Harbor Freight. Yeah, if I need to buy something, I'll go there real quick and I'll buy it if I need something that I need. But if I'm going to use it every day all the time, I want to buy, I, w I would like to, if I could afford it, to buy something that will last me forever, you know? Uh, what's that Baldwin's gun shop? Let's see what's that. All right. But guns are normally loaded at gun shops unless the shop owner is carrying, all right? It doesn't get robbed. I get that. You know what I mean? Um, a BB will, yeah, a BB in the eye will mess you up. Uh, I don't want to get shot with anything, man. I don't want to get shot with a blow dart. Speaking of blow darts, what's going on with that, uh, concert down there where all these people died and one of the security people said that he got hit in the neck with a blow dart and it made me think about the project veritas uh remember when they were talking to that guy on project veritas and he was like yeah he goes you know if people don't want to get vaccinated we'll just hit him with a blow dart and you know fentanyl if you think of fentanyl or car fentanyl it's so powerful so the, one of the security people said felt like i got stuck in the neck with something he says and then i just like passed out a few moments later and it could have been fentanyl or something like that. It's hard to say, you know. All right. All right. Who we got over here? It, it was a prop gun. Oh, you are bad. You are bad. You, know, you are so mean. That is terrible, terrible, terrible. All right, guys. So uh, I want to know what you guys think about, you know, uh, what I want to think about this. I want to I, I want to know what do you guys Thumbs up, thumbs down. What do you guys think about this Kyle Rittenhouse thing? First of all, I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I've been going over, been following it, just like many of you maybe have been following it. A lot of us are too busy to follow. But I pop it and I listen. I will be really, really surprised if he wins. If he didn't have such a terrible prosecutor on this case, okay, that is only just that he's just a nasty guy. All right. He's not really good at what he does. He's a good liar because all lawyers are good liars. All right. This is what they do for a living. But if it wasn't such, if the, if number one, if he wasn't innocent, all right, let's put it that way. All right. We already, I already believe that he's innocent. This is what I believe. He's protecting himself, but he's innocent. Everything that I have looked at, okay, you've got the FBI that has suppressed their drone footage. They have also suppressed their, uh, their IR, their infrared drone, uh, uh, FLIR drone footage, okay? And so, and I've seen lots of pictures all across, uh, still shots, some videos here and there of, you know, when they were talking about, let's, we'll start from the beginning with this, uh, with, with, the, with, 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 the, with the tree jumper, whatever else his name is, Rosen, R Rosenblum, right? So, and he said that he put the fire extinguisher down and then he was pointing the weapon at him and I've seen different photos uh, with, the infrared where you could see that the weapon doesn't show up. It shows up white. So it has no, no heat to it or anything because it wasn't fired prior to that or anything like that. And you could see that his arm was actually out to his side. He wasn't pointing anything. He was holding the weapon this way with one arm and the other arm was down. Uh, but if he didn't have such a poor prosecutor that put on such a poor case, all right. And if he didn't have, he, he he's lucky to get, he'll be lucky to get out of this is my whole point because his defense attorney is freaking horrible man i mean this guy is absolutely yeah i mean he's doing what he's doing right now but you listen to him i mean i sit there and I listen to it and if you guys want let me know man i'll play some of the uh his closing arguments it is just it's painful to watch it's painful to listen to kyle himself whoever prepped him and if it was his attorney who prepped him all right whoever prepped him it's good that kid is way ahead of his time, and I truly believe that down the road somewhere in some form of training, okay, for some type of organization, they are going to use what he did and how he reacted so cool under fire at that particular time. Because this kid had, he had, I, I didn't see, it was like without malice, this kid, he is a natural born operator. Cool as a cucumber under pressure. No doubt about that, all right? Keeps his wits about him. Kid got banged in the head with a skateboard, was going out, and still had the uh, awareness of, number one, of this feeling and seeing an attack to come towards him, thwart off, defend against an attack, and see who the people who had their hands up who weren't attacking him and stood down, 
you know, um, I got to give that guy. I, I truly do hope. I mean, he seems like a decent kid. I truly do hope that he gets out from under this. I'm so glad that they that they dropped that misdemeanor charge, you know, so he doesn't have really anything on his record if he winds up getting away with this. The jury's out on it. And what scares me is that the jury's still out on it. You know, I don't know if the jury's sequestered and if anybody could tell me, you know, if, if the jury in 2032, oof. Uh, if the jury can, um, uh, if they know whether the jury's sequestered or not. Do you know what I mean? What I mean by if a jury is sequestered, that means that they, when they're deliberating, they put up in a hotel. They have to stay there. They can't go home. They can't leave. They have to stay there. They go into their, I guess they have a library over there is where they stay. They go into their library, and then they go ahead and they take a vote. They debate. I don't know if you guys ever been on a jury. Debate. Uh, uh, they'll give the vote, then they'll debate the points. They'll ask uh, for the uh, uh, particulars. They'll ask for, uh, sometimes they'll even ask for the elements of the crime to be read back, which is not a good thing. So if you hear that the judge is going to read the elements of the crime back to them, that means they're looking to convict him on something. But the fact that they're not back already so soon, that they didn't just be like, you know, within an hour or two, come back and say, you know what, not guilty. It's pretty deep, you know what I mean? So it, it gets, I, I'm sure it's pretty scary for us all the way around. Um, let's see what he said. All right, he played Call of Duty once, all right, so they chose guilty. Yeah, I know. Uh, like, all right, I'll give you another example, okay? No retreat, what's going on, man? I see you up there. Uh, when the district attorney was talking to him about uh, asking him about uh, cartridges. I mean, like, at every single point in there, I'm not an attorney, but if I was, I'd be like, objection, 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 objection. Call in a professional witness. You know what I mean? You're going to ask him about cartridges, and he should have called a timeout. He should have called for a sidebar. The judge should have stopped it immediately, and he should have got his uh, uh, his witness, Kyle Rittenhouse, and said, listen, I want you to say, I'm not, a, I, I'm not a professional. I don't know anything about this. You're wasting your time asking me any more questions on this. But he allowed it to go on and on and on. And what does this do? This is takes the mind of the jury and it floats them into these different crazy scenarios like, uh, uh, you know, bullets blowing up because they're hollow points. And, you know, I mean, the, the DA knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. He's, he's going the wrong way because he has no case. So he's got to put on a show. It was pretty, it's, it's pretty damn scary. Gone racing. What's going on, man? I see you over there. The new footage with the audio is where I caught it. What was that? Let me see. Did I miss something over here? What'd you catch? All right. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Can't get enough trigger newbie built. 458 so calm. All right. Single shot. Ooh. You know, I have a, um, there is a, uh, speaking of 458 real quick. There is, oh, it's a single shot. 450 newbie built. All right, can't get enough courage to trigger newbie built. I don't know what you meant by that. A single shot. Let, let us know what you meant by that. I'm kind of kind of confused, you know? I know you got courage, man. Let's see. Zombies in the space clown wave. Wait, watch your fit in the clown and wave. And then parking lot footage. Rose and Bloom with sevens from the job. Get cage point. <laughs> I think my wife said, I think my wife was talking about <laughs> zombies in space. I got to check it out. We'll have to look for that. All right. West Covina Dodge, what's going on, man? He should have used Texas needed killing defense. Yes. Oh, my God. Here's my other point. As his attorney, they should have never called a jury in to begin with. Because if you're going to go with a self-defense case as a matter of law, then you go trial by judge. Because if the judge convicts you, then you're going to be guaranteed. If you know that you've got it as a matter of law, and you get convicted because a judge convicts you because you go in trial just in front of a judge and that's it. You got a, a lot more latitude for appeal this way. Why would that why would that lawyer because maybe the lawyer wanted to become more famous? I would imagine so, all right? He wanted to strut his stuff, he wanted to test himself. But that should have just been trial by judge because they were going with a self-defense case as a matter of law as a matter of Wisconsin law, that he had the right to whatever else was going on there, okay? They had the right to defend themselves in each and every situation, and it would have forced the judge to go one of two ways. He would have stopped the trial at midpoint and just shut it all down and dismissed everything. But now they're going to wait on a jury, and then if the jury convicts him, 
what his lawyer is going to do is lawyer is going to file what's called a 30-30 motion, okay? It's a 30-30. It's a motion to reverse what the jury just did right there. And then the judge is going to, that's going to take a couple of days. It might take a day. It might do it that day. Then the judge is going to come back, and then the judge has an opportunity to reverse the jury's decision and find him not guilty on whatever charges he wants to find him if they find him guilty on stuff. But for a case like this, I mean, why would you put it in the hands of people you don't know from another state? It makes no, they're not your peers. It makes no sense whatsoever, you know? Ah, uh, where are we at right here? There was something that somebody wrote over here. Let me get back over here. All right. Imagine what it says about Roma mentality, all right, at that exact moment, especially with this criminal record. Yeah. When they started bringing up Rosenbaum, whether he's on medication, I mean, that doesn't make a. I don't care if a person's on medication. That's you're you're out in the street. That's not Kyle's responsibility to know whether he was on medication, but whether the guy was acting right. And on top of that, Kyle's lawyer in his closing argument says, "Well, we all know he wasn't acting right. What it was? Then what was he acting like? He was acting no different than any other uh, uh any other person that was out there that had an attitude because they were part of the mob." and felt superior to anybody who was not a part of the mob. So that's where they were. He had nothing to do with attitude. You know what I mean? Yeah, so they were all acting strange. And on top of that, everybody who was there came from, for the most part, most of them came from out of state. So, absolutely nuts, all right? They won't admit that he was chasing Kyle trying to take the gun. Yeah, I know. And... I don't know if you guys watched when they showed uh, in, in his closing arguments when they, he kept showing it like in slow motion or he'll say, okay, and this was the FBI phone uh, uh, drone footage, which mysteriously nobody could find. And all of a sudden now the DA has it, you know, like the defense never had it before him. Uh, and then he's, he's trying to take it. You ever hear like a picture tells it has a thousand words, you know? So he's trying to like stop in one frame and tell an entire story in one frame for something that actually happened in like, milliseconds the whole thing uh but i'm glad that kyle's lawyer did say you know like you know it was undisputed that the guy had his hand on the barrel you know it's crazy it's absolutely crazy they're basically saying rosa balloon was was simply a good guy who raped 10 little boys you know um yeah i don't know what he needed but he certainly got what he got you know Mr. Paceras, what's going on, man? Just came in from shooting range, getting ready to do a zombie apocalypse. Yes, 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 yes. You guys, and how about everybody else, man? You guys out there shooting and stuff like that? I uh, I want to go. This it's starting to get chilly over here. Um, and but I want to get out there, man. I want to do some more shooting. I've been doing it things a little bit more, but I really want to get out there and get some get some good shooting in. You know, this. Um... On top of that, though. What do you guys think? Here's, here's my point. Oh, there's something else I wanted to talk about tonight also. I want to talk about what, uh, I want to talk about BLM, all right? And I wanted to talk about this, uh, let me see, I think I have it over here. Hold up. Uh, did you guys see the Don, the Dan Bongino thing? All right, so, okay, so let's, uh, so... You have a new mayor of New York City. And I know you guys don't give a shit about New York. And I really don't give a shit about New York City either. You know what I mean? Um, but you got a new mayor in New York City, okay? A black mayor who is an ex-cop, all right? Who is a captain who I heard was an asshole from my friends in the NYPD when he was a cop. And he reaches out to BLM, the chapter of BLM in the Bronx, okay? So this guy, Hawk Newsom, is the head of BLM in the Bronx, okay? And... He gets on there, and uh, he asks him for his endorsement when he's running. So, just to catch you guys up on this. So, Hawk, uh, supposedly, according to Hawk Newsom, he gave his, you know, the BLM endorsed him, and so on and so forth. And the guy wound up winning. Any Democrat's going to win in New York. Democrats outvote New in New York City. They there's, outlive in New York City. Uh, when you talk about the five boroughs, Brooklyn, Bronx, you know, with the exception of Staten Island, it's pretty, pretty red. Eight to one. All right. So it doesn't make a difference who you are. I don't care how great you are. You're not going to, you're not going to win because all the freaks of the world, that's the magnet. It's the, it's, it's a freak magnet. All the freaks of the world dump into New York City. All right. That's why New York is just, and, and California is the same way. You know, you've got LA and you've got San Francisco and 
So then he sits down with him. Now the guy's the mayor elect. He wins the election. Okay. And uh, the guy supposedly flips on him. And one of the things that he sat down and he talked to him about, he says, you know, I, you know, if, when he talked about going back to old ways of policing. And what he was saying was there were two, two, two important points he was talking about. New York had a big issue with stop and frisk. Now, did it take guns and drugs and all that stuff off the street? I'm sure it did. And I'm, I'm, I, 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 actually, it did. But that means that just like anybody, you, me, anybody, just, that's just even though it was more prevalent, okay, in minority areas where cops could just roll up, throw everybody on the wall and start frisking them, all right? And granted, they were doing with a bunch of people that hang it out and maybe they knew it was a known drug area. But the point is, is that they wound up stopping it in New York. So he's telling him, don't bring that type of policing back. Also, in New York, there are no more plainclothes police officers anymore. So they used to have a lot of plainclothes out there that were out there in the neighborhoods and then they would see something or whatever and then they would arrest somebody. And at the same time, also, you get people that are you know, get beat up, they get, uh, New York gets sued and all this other stuff. You've, you've heard the stories forever. My point being is that the mayor elect flipped on him and said, don't tell me how to do my job. When he originally asked him for his endorsement, he says, and I want you to hold me accountable. And then when he was holding him accountable that, so anyway, Dan Bongino calls him out because what Hawk said afterwards, he walked out at a meeting with the mayor elect, very angry and said, they're going to burn the city down. And if you guys haven't seen it, I could probably find it right here. Dan Bongino. Let's see. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. Let's see. I don't know if it's going to, I had the video here too. I had it on here. Let's see. And my whole point with this whole thing is that Dan Bongino was so stuck up on. Now, according to Hawk Newsom, all right, uh, let's talk about Hawk Newsom was, is a, a black man who went to college and probably got, uh, um, got into whatever he got into in college and, just like all these other Marxists, okay, and became a part of BLM, started the chapter in New York. And according to him, they're into like cleaning up their area, you know, cleaning up the piss in the, in, in the hallways and helping people and all this other stuff in the black community. And that's all well and good. That's fantastic, okay? But Dan Bongino was harping on the fact that he said we are going to start burning and looting and there will be bloodshed in the streets if you go back to the old style policing. And... I just think that ben, Dan Bongino screwed up the whole thing. He got he allowed this guy to get under his skin, who just sat there like he just didn't give a shit. All right, that he is on top of the world, and it's pretty indicative of what, of what we see out there right now. Let me see something here. Uh, bu, 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 I think I could find it for over here. Let's go videos. Let's see. Okay, that was my buddy right there, and here we go. Let's see if I got it here. I think I can find a few guys right here. Here we go. Let's try. I think we found this channel right here. Let's see. Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Laron, and we're back with another video. You see the thumbnail? And violence. Hey, I just want to get let me, you let me. Hey, because I don't want somebody else's opinion on it. I want to just see the see the thing right here. Someone just showed it, but oh no no no, not showing it right here. Oh, this is it right here. Here we go. This incident you don't like. No, I... Okay. Do you condemn riots and burning down buildings after a police use of force incident you don't like? No, I, I can... I, what I'll say is I understand when a police officer unjustifiably kills someone 
why people lash out. I understand that completely. I didn't ask. I'm not why can't to, you answer I'm the question? I'm not going to. I'm not going to condemn. You can't answer the nor question. Nor am I going to condone it. Now, now, see, here's the thing. Isn't when that Osama cowardly? bin Laden, Wasn't when that Osama cowardly? bin Laden I'm not and those it, but terrorists I'm not condone it, attacked so I don't take the United stand? States of America, can you let you, me listen, talk? Man. You have a show. You no, talk no, as much you as you want. No, because you seem to talk a lot can of talk? junk, and then when I put you on the spot, you won't answer a damn question. Do you condone violence? I'm answering violence, the question. Or do you condemn I'm violence? answering You're the question. You're all over the place. Well, Just I'm condemn answering the question. violence and burning of buildings down. How hard is this? Okay. So when Osama bin Laden attacked the World Trade Center, did you say this America should deal with it peacefully? You're not answering the question, man. I'm posing nah, questions have, to that you. That is nothing you know, to do with people burning down businesses in New York City. You're not going to answer the question, Hawk, but listen. Uh, wait, I okay, I'll give you this. I'll shot. give you this. I'll give you this. No, there's nothing else I don't to condone it. I, I don't promote it, but I will not condemn it. Yeah, that's just cowardly, man. That's just cowardly. No, you're you a coward. for something. You yeah. know what? Yeah. You see, I'm you're coward, trying to bait yeah. me. I God bless you, yeah. man. I'm out of here. Nope. God bless. Yeah. All right, so, okay. One of the things that I, I could not help but agree with Hawk Newsom about is he said, all right, now let's look. They're looking on a smaller scale, all right? So let's look at this logically. Let's talk about this for a second. They're looking on a small scale of what their needs and their wants are. They're saying, look, we don't want the type of policing that was there before. And what he did say in his interview is like, hey, this is something because with, with all the electronics, with all, everything that we have at our disposal in this city, he said there's got to be a way that we could get this right. And Hawk Newsom had a huge point there. But Dan Bongino just wanted to talk about the burning and the looting and the fear factor of it all. You know what I mean? Like, truth of the matter is, nobody gives a fucking rat's ass, okay? Nobody, New York was up and running right after the last time it got burned and looted. Who cares, all right? Who are the ones that pay for the burning and the looting? It's not the small people. It's it was the major businesses, the big businesses. Who cares about that? Corporations are the ones that suffer. Now, in that regard, when that was happening, Hawk Newsom also talks about, he says, you know, we can, we, we should be, we should be able to have a conversation about this so that we can figure out a way to go forward so that we know what's going on. And I get that. Nobody wants uh, um, any type of law enforcement abuse or anything like that. He wasn't saying, you know, uh, he wasn't going all a cab on them. He wasn't saying nothing like that. He was just saying, look, we should talk about this. But Dan Bongino wanted to get to the, the burning and the looting. So then I said, and then he also mentioned about the stop and frisk in the Fourth Amendment. And Hawk Newsom says, look, he said, I believe in the Constitution of the United States. He said, so anything else that you're saying doesn't make any difference to me because I believe in the Constitution. And then it got me to thinking as I'm listening to this. And I said, okay, I gotta have to look at this with both of my eyes wide open. So yes. We feel the same way about the federal government infringing upon our rights in any way, shape, or form. So we wouldn't be opposed to, although violence is not never the answer, but it may be the only solution at some point. Do you get my, you understand what I'm saying? Which is essentially what I got from what Hawk Newsom was saying. He's saying, look, I'm not condoning it. I'm not supporting it. I'm not against it. But sometimes it's the only solution. And because if, if someone's not listening to you anymore and they're still holding you at the end of a dagger or at the end of a gun, what, then what other choice do you have? And I guess that's what he's saying. Now, don't get me wrong. When we see rioting and looting, we see opportunists. It's always going to be that way. It's always going to be that way. You know what I mean? But if nobody's listening to you, and let's pay attention to something all right let's let's make something patently clear all in 2020 all the burning down all the riots all the craziness has anything changed have any of these cities actually changed where they say yeah we're defunding the police we're doing this i mean like they you want to cut so much off the budget of the nypd like, this is what i know about because i'm here and i have friends who are law enforcement who are still making the same amount of money that they were making, doing the same thing. They have to change their policing in, so, in certain ways. So be it. Everybody's got to change here and there. I remember being in the service, and they, they had, I, 
the people in basic training were holding up yellow cards, stress cards, because the drill instructors would, sh if they stressed them out too much, they would hold up a card. Say, you're stressing me out too much. This is my yellow card right here. And then we, we, we move past that. Now we got, you know, uh, uh, soldiers with nail polish out in formation. I mean, and that'll pass too. But my point being is that Dan Bongino, because he's an ex-cop from Brooklyn in the 75th precinct, and he's got so many law enforcement that support him, he cannot, he's got himself painted in a corner. He cannot go any other way. This whole conversation should have things that really should be talked about. Okay, he answered your question. I don't condone it. I'm not against it. I'm not for it. But you know what? He came out of a meeting with a guy that just told him to stick it up his butt, all right, after all the support that he gave him, and he was angry and got in front of the cameras. How many people do that? Okay. How many people do it? Saying it doesn't mean it's going to happen. You know? If they come and try to take our guns away, what's going to happen? There's going to be violence, right or wrong. That doesn't mean it's going to happen, though. But all of us say it every day. We're just thinking on a different level. So how are we different from that? And get, trust me, I'm no BLM fan. But do what you got to do, you know? What do you want me to tell you? Joshua Spencer, what's going on, man? We didn't fight to be freed all right, from shackles from the British so that we could accept the changes of domestic tyranny. I agree. I agree 100%. 100%. As you see more and more. So you got to remember something, all right? So in my opinion, it was an opportunity for the left to use BLM to do their bidding. Now, you could go with a lot of theories that were out there that they were on, uh, you know, that all of the rioting and looting were in uh, opportunity excuse me, opportunity zones. So where all these businesses had to close down and then all of the Amazon, owners of Amazon and all these people that were selling their shares can buy up this property so they didn't have to pay taxes on it. I really don't, these billionaires don't pay taxes anyway. But my point being is that I believe that they were used. I believe that the people that were running it were opportunists. The, 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 the women that were running it, all right, the pieces of trash were opportunists just so they could buy a house and move into a white neighborhood. But the point being is their plight is still the same. Nothing's gotten better for them. Nothing has changed. Cops are a little bit more hands-off, and the violence increases. It's always going to be that way. There's going to be peaks and troughs. We just need to get through this one, you know? <clears throat> yeah, there will be blood. There's always going to be blood, you know? And there's always going to be the same thing. Show them what's going on, brother. It's always going to be it. So when I think about it and I say, you know what? Okay, you know, uh, I don't have to like what somebody does. I don't have to like what they stand for. I don't have to... Uh, like what your history and how you got there, okay? The beautiful beautiful part about being human is that you can change your point of view at any time. And it's your business why you do it. You could hate a group of people or hate something. I, I hated Brussels sprouts my whole life until my wife made me Brussels sprouts. I would not eat Brussels sprouts as a kid, all right? So if somebody who knew me when I was young that I wouldn't eat Brussels sprouts and saw me as an adult in Brussels sprouts, they're going to be like, oh, you're full of shit, man. You told me you didn't like Brussels sprouts. You know what I mean? Now I see you eating them. Well, I changed my fucking mind. You know what I mean? I like them now. I like the way my wife makes them. I won't eat them the way I had them as a kid just boiled. You know what I mean? Um, but you get my point? So, yeah, so you have to look for things because you got to remember something. None of us are in this alone. We can't do this alone. We can't do any of this alone. We have to work together in order to move forward. People who are Second Amendment people like us, and don't get me wrong, I am not about educating. I am completely and absolutely against all this shit about educating the non the anti-gunners. I don't give a fuck about you, all right? If you didn't want to take the time to educate yourself, this is something I like, okay? Something I like. I don't fly rocket ships. I have no reason to fly a rocket ship. I got nothing against them. I'm not going to go out there and vote that people can't have rock ships in their backyard. Okay? I just don't want one. I don't want to go into space. All right? I like oxygen. My point being is that for tyranny in general, it takes everybody. And a guy like Dan Bongino doing what he's doing here, he's just continuing to perpetuate the separation 
of Colin, the, uh, this guy who is obviously a leader in his community. Now, this guy's a college-educated guy, all right? He's not, a, he's not a stupid guy, all right? He's not a guy that uh, sides up and sides next to. And, and before I say everything I said, I've been reading it to Hawk Newsome all week, all right? And I say, the guy, he got to where he got to. There's, there's a lot of stuff I don't know about him. But, you know, I like a Sergio Zucchini uh, uh, outfit. But there's a lot of stuff I don't know about him. But on this particular point, I could say, okay, the guy said some really important things. He's pro-Constitution, all right? And he wants to move past any form of tyranny, you know? And this has nothing to do with being against the NYPD, you know what I mean? Because we need police. We love our police. We should support our police, all right? But we don't want to be the ones that get pulled over by that asshole also, you know what I mean? And then we're like, damn, man, this really sucks, you know what I mean? I support you guys. What are you doing, you know? If we were doing nothing wrong, I guess, you know what I mean? Black Lives Matter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. You can change it. Hey, jeez. <laughs> Prosecutor flag, flagging court has seen the judge shorter, all right? All right. Pull a tourist judge from the robe. <laughs> all right. If you ask me something, I'm running and running, running, running data fumes. All right. All right, my brother. All right. Colin Kaepernick drafting all the NFL players directly from the yeah, did you see that stupid shit on Colin Kaepernick? The way they're like measuring their reach on that, and he's comparing it. I mean, you have, see, these people are opportunist instigators, is what they are. LeBron James, why would you pick on a 17 year old boy? What does that have to do with you, LeBron James? You know, and you know what it is? It took LeBron James to become a millionaire to prove how much of a piece of shit he really is. It took money for the real LeBron James to come out and say how much he hates people. I could never, ever, ever say I hate a race of people. It just makes no sense to me whatsoever. Are there a lot of asshole white people? There's a lot of piece of shit asshole white people. Are there a lot of asshole black people? I'm sure there are, just like every other damn race. But it doesn't mean, you know what I mean? Like, has no... To, for somebody to take every single time to get an opportunity... To go against something that is other than them. That's a piece of shit. You know what I mean? And people like that don't deserve to be in our society. You know? they Everybody deserves to have an opinion. Don't get me wrong. Because this is what America is all about. Alright? But somebody who keeps doing it over and over again. That's a little psychotic right there. There's a problem there. And if you gave somebody like that power over people. Imagine the horrible things that they would do with it. That's the scary part about that, you know? Biden called him a white supremacist. Oh, yeah. And, and apparently, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse's family is, uh, the, the lawyers are trying to do something. You know, his mom, his poor mom, this kid's poor mom, you know? So did you guys hear about the $2 million that, you know, so I, I sent some money, uh, we could send a dollar, you send a dollar, you could send whatever you send when, when he was trying to put money together, right? And did you guys hear, so what's that guy's name who is the, uh, the lawyer from Texas, now in Georgia, and he lost his uh, law license in Georgia, but he was, um, he was the original lawyer, what the hell is his name, he was really popular in the Trump movement, you know what I mean? The hell was his name? Well, it turns out that he was trying to grab that $2 million from, because he was a part of getting that $2 million together, you know, with going out there and getting people's money. He was trying to get the judge to take that $2 million upon the completion of the case and put it into his account. I'm trying to remember this guy's name. It'll, it'll come to me at some point. If it comes to you, let Linwood. There you go. That's his name. I, I, that's one of the things that I read. I don't know whether or not it's true or not, but uh, it was supposedly Limwood was trying to get his hands on that money. You know, um, you know, it's like, thanks, Gary. I appreciate it, man. I got a lot of stuff on my mind. Is I mean, I know I'm jumping all over the place, man, but I've got a lot of like, I'm watching this stuff. All right, and I want to tell you something that I told one of one of the other guys, um, and uh, it was actually uh, S2 Pallet when I told him. Doing this stuff right here, going live and talking about this stuff and living in ch keeping up with. I'm not one of these channels where I jump on the new, new thing. I have to digest it. I'm slow in a lot of ways. I have to think, you know what I mean? Uh, I have to think about it. And then I got to think about how I think about it. Um, 
but it really, really affects me. It affects me. So like, it makes me sick in a way when I think about it, because I'm so, I'll have such a strong opinion on something that I can't pull myself out and look at it in a bird's eye view and really try to think like my original thing when I saw Hawk Newsom when he said about, you know, burn it all down, do this. My original thing was like, you know, okay, what do we got? 1,760 yards in a mile. We got a bullet drop of this. And, uh, you know what I mean? Like the, the craziness, the craziness that rattles around your brain. So I have to back off of stuff. And so it's hard for me. And as much as I would love to be on here all the time and talk about stuff, but it just affects me so deeply because I don't get on. I don't want to get on here and make fun about people. I can make fun about people all day long, but I don't want to. I want to try to talk, find something to talk about and inspire us as a group together, you know what I mean? And let us know that we are not, the last thing that I want to do here is I want us to live in a bubble. I just don't, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I don't want us to be in a bubble where we're just sounding the same thing off of one another. It just makes no sense to me whatsoever. You know, we need to be able to listen to what other people have to say because in order for us to take that next step, we're going to need other people and they're going to need us too, you know? Um, you know, all this shit that people think about. I was talking about, I wrote something on somewhere. A uh, guy was talking about, um, oh, so this guy on Reddit says, hey, man, he says, uh, what would be the best distance to uh, zero in my red dot? He says, I don't have the best of vision. What do you guys recommend? He says, I'm shooting 5.56. Five, and, you know, so I watch all these people on Reddit. They give them, you know, yeah, you know, I do a 50 yard, 5,300 yard. I do this. And I'm like, Essentially, what I said was this. I say, first of all, every red that I have on any type of rifle or, uh, is going to be zeroed at uh, on any semi-automatic rifle is going to be zeroed at 25 yards. All right. Because here's the deal. All right. First of all, if you are going to zero at 50 yards, yeah, you'll be able to hit something out to 200, uh, 300 or something like that. You'll be in the you know, vital organs. 25 yards out to 250, you'll be in the vital organs, which is fine. Okay. But you'd be pretty hard pressed, all right, at uh, explaining why you shot somebody at 50 yards away. You know what I mean? If you needed to protect yourself with a red dot, because a red dot, in uh, yeah, can you hunt with it and stuff like that? But you know, most hunters, I don't know if they would use a red dot. I would use use a scope. You know, whether it's an LPVO or it's a regular regular rifle scope. You know, you want to make a, a you want to make a good kill. My point being is that. Why would you zero your weapon at 50 yards if the only threat that you would ever have would be under 25 yards, okay? It makes no sense to me. You know what I mean? Your weapon should be, if you can use a handgun, you're not going to be shooting 50, 75 yards. You're going to be shooting within whatever it is, 21 foot rule, whatever you want to call it. Same thing with a rifle if you're using it for self-defense. Any real threat is going to be within 25 yards. But the thing is, I said, all these lone wolf mentality people thinking they're going to be fighting a war somewhere, shooting an unknown enemy that's going to be shooting at them from 50 yards, which isn't going to happen either, okay? Because those will be a lot closer than you think as well, all right? They're going to be on your front lawn. That's not going to happen either. And um, guys got really pissed off at me. You know what I mean? I say, I, I'm like, hey, you know, you, if you fall into that category, you think you're that lone wolf mentality guy, you know, then you haven't thought this through, okay, because, uh, yeah, there probably is a war coming, or there probably is something coming, all right, but we just don't know what it is yet, you know, and so what do we do? We just keep our friendships close, you know, but listen to what other people have to say, because we may have to move through their area to get to where we need to get to, so we need to understand them, you know, I hate to see it happen somewhere else. You know, um, yes, speaking about before, the reason I've been going live is because talking about all this information really gets me deep. That's why. That's what the whole thing is, you know. You know, Colin is it wrong, or I just said it wrong, you know. I, I mean, Colin has a right to his own opinion. He has a right to do whatever he wants to do. But he's taken it, and he's materialized it, and he's made money off it. That is wrong. That is absolutely wrong. My brother, what's going on, man? How are you? Thank you very much, man. Good to, good to see you. Try not to get snapped by those gators down there, man. You guys, this guy's doing some alligator shit down there, man. It's really crazy. He's got an alligator in his house. 
And it's, every time he takes a picture, the alligator's like looking back at his dog, like, wait till I get bigger. No more goldfish for me. I'm going to be eating dogs. You know what I mean? Uh, very so 90% of it is a form of control. It's not really slavery. Up, upset or fail. Yeah. So, essentially, basically, I just want to get on, man. I want to talk to you guys, man. Uh, I am hoping that the tru- the uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, like, I truly feel for this kid. I truly, truly do. Uh, I seems like a good kid. I'd like to see him have a good life, but uh, he's, you know, yeah, people say, oh, I'll be looking over his shoulder forever. Maybe, maybe not. You know what I mean? But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be the one to go after Kyle Rittenhouse if I know he's armed. That kid is on point. That kid is a killer. You know what I mean? He's straight up and down gangster. Now he is. You know, don't let that baby face fool you, man. That kid's got a good eye, man. He's not afraid. Uh, he's got heart. Um, I think that, any thoughts on Tim Kennedy? Who's Tim Kennedy? Hold on a second. Who's Tim Kennedy? Let's see. Because this was this, this is all about you. You guys talk at whatever you want to talk about. Throw it up there. Let me look up Tim Kennedy right here. Tim Kennedy. Let's see. Hold up. Tim Kennedy. Are you talking about the fighter? The X, X, uh, X. What did he do? The BJJ guy, Tim Kennedy? Is that who you're talking about? <laughs> MMA and Army Sniper. I don't know who he is. Let me check him out. Oh, I've seen this guy before, man. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Um, This guy... He's not the one that said that stupid shit on uh on Instagram, is he? He's not the guy that said that stupid shit on Instagram, is he? Is that is that the same guy? Cuz that was uh, you know, that was pretty um hoity-toity if you ask me, you know? But uh yeah, I mean, he's done his thing, you know what I mean? Let me tell you, bro, guys. I know I speak to him all the time, my bros, man, and guys that are serving still today. Um I my my buddy just said it the other day. He said it he said it perfectly, all right? He said uh, retired command he's still working at Ranger School. Retired command sergeant major Ranger School. He said, "Yeah, Steve, he says everybody wants to do operator shit till it's time to do everybody wants to be an operator till it's time to do operator shit, you know?" <laughs> and he's right. Um yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, I've never, I, I just don't know the guy. Um, He seems like a good guy. I got to give it to him. He's taking everything that he knows. He's taking everything that he does. And he's making a living off of it. And if he's making somebody's life better somewhere along the line, then he's doing a fantastic job. You know, when I used to train people, the the biggest thing out of it, all right, was... uh. Watching the transformation of people that I used to work with. That's the biggest thing for me. That's what I used to get about it. I never forget when I was a, a, a personal trainer. I got out of the service, came home. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I was really into computers. And I was really good at it. And I was standing online. I'll tell you guys this little story. So I'm standing online. And I'm going to get my um, uh, uh, Microsoft Certified Systems Engineering uh, uh, class. So I could get, become a Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. All right. And I'm on 40, 40-something. 40 I'm on, no, 26th Street. I'm on 26th Street in Manhattan. And I, I don't have a job, and I'm out of work. I got like 70-something dollars in my pocket, man. I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm broke. I need to get this job, man. I've been going to school. I, I, I had graduated college, and I needed wanted to get this engineering stuff, and I really wanted to get on. And this is, man, this is a long time ago. And a friend of mine calls me. So when I was, before I was in the service, I grew up in a whole like karate family too. You know what I mean? Like my, my cousin's own dojos all over the United States, West Coast Martial Arts down in San Diego, here in New York. We were always, we used to fight as kids, like with uh, really fight for money because we didn't have any money. You like to be out there trying to hustle money and stuff like that. We used to fight like real chalked off rings and stuff like that. So I was always into martial arts and I was always into teaching and stuff like that when I got my first black belt in Kempo. And then went into the service and 
didn't really do much with it in, in the military. You know what I mean? Like, and martial arts back then wasn't not like it is today. Okay. Big difference. All right. MMA has changed everything. And what we've learned in just the past 20 years of MMA is more than we've learned in the past 2000 of martial arts. You know, we've learned what works. Okay, so anyway, so I'm standing online and I get a phone call from a friend of mine. And he says, hey, man, he says, hey, this place is, uh, this, it was a big hopping gym in New York City called Crunch Fitness. He said, they're looking for personal trainers. And you pretty good talker. You seem to know what you're doing. Would you like to get a job? I'm like, well, do these guys make any money? He's like, yeah, he goes, you know, like most of the guys, he goes, if they're working full time, they're, they're probably making, uh, you know, uh, 30, 40, 50,000 a year. And this was pretty good at the time. I'm like, I'll try it, you know? So he says, uh, he says, there's, I'll, I'll set you up with a meeting. So I go downtown. He gives me a meeting with this woman who is the personal training manager at this crunch fitness, it's a big club down in, uh, uh, um, lower Manhattan. So I go down there and I go to meet with her and she completely blows me off. But while I'm down there, I get to talk to somebody else. I said, yeah, there's going to be um, this other this certification program. It's going to be held at the, another Crunch Fitness up on 38th Street. Make a long story short, I go up to 38th Street. I sign up for everything. Like a week later, I didn't even study for it. I went and took my, took my test. I spent the whole weekend with the class and uh, tested out. Passed the test, became a certified a personal trainer in New York City. As I'm walking out, I see the training manager of that club. And his name is Antonio Cini. And he says, why should I take a chance on you? He goes, you don't know anything about this. I said, well, I just got certified. But I tell you what, if you give me this job, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll never let you down. You know. Now, mind you, I never made it in the door because I was waiting online outside. Never made it in the door to get my certification for the network networking engineer. I turned around and ran downtown to try to get a job. So I missed out on this other thing. So when I got down there, I'm the type of person, like, I'm fully committed. I have to do this now. I need to end this day finding a job, which I wound up using the money to have in my pocket to pay for the certification. Went to the class. I get a job. Make a long story short, at that particular club right there, I was within the first year, I was the first six months, I was the top trainer in the club. I think that first year I made around $80,000 in that club, right? So that started my career off as a personal trainer. And Crunch was known with all the celebrities and things like that. And this guy comes up to me. He's now training managers had changed. They get transferred around. And I never forget the training manager said this to me. It's my whole point of coming back to this. He said, you know, he says, I remember when you started because they would give you leads. The new people that would sign up in the club. Then you would get in contact with them. You give them their first personal training session. You'd learn about them. And you would, uh, they buy personal training sessions and you would work with them. He said, Steve, he says, even from day one to day now, he goes, I've watched you from when you here. He goes, whether it's just a lead that you would make $7 or you'd make $45 an hour on your new clients. He said, they're all, you're just as excited about both of them. And I told him, I said, it's not about that. I said, it was about working, helping somebody. I figured out that I could actually do something really good. And I was changing people's lives. And what I didn't know at the time that these were, I was networking at the same time. These were all very wealthy people. If they could afford to pay that amount of money for personal training, they had to be wealthy, right? And that was the whole thing. The whole thing, just like when you talk about Tim Kennedy. All right? So if you're changing at least one person's life doing this, the rest is all gravy. You know what I mean? And that's what kept me going. And then, yeah, I, a part of me was like, man, I wish I would have wound up doing that. Then I got to occupational therapy and I started, you know, so my career changed as time went on. But I was a personal trainer for a long time. That's why I was training a lot of celebrities. And then that club that I went to originally downtown, which was their biggest club ever, all right? At the time, it was their biggest one, Crunch Fitness. I wound up taking that club over. I wound up running that club. I wound up becoming a manager and running that club. And um, it was funny because the, the girl had popped in one day. She would transfer somewhere else. And she was like, didn't I tell you, didn't I blow you off a long time ago? I'm like, yeah, you did, <laughs> you know? And there I was, I was running the club and making six figures and was doing great for many, many years. Um, then I, you know, things change and you move on. My point being is that if you're making a difference in somebody's life, and it doesn't have to be with what you do, it's just making a difference in somebody's life, period. You know what I mean? Making your life better, making your wife's life better, your children's life better. Just doing something to make them, you know, make their life better. Because you got to remember something. Even though we are in the shit right now, 
with these crazy people out there. I think people are waking up and realizing we are the supermajority here. We're not going to change the way we live. We're not going to go abide by that. Their stats came out. I just saw their stats and they said that, I just saw it a minute ago. Talk about people getting getting a shot. So their goal this year was to have 70% of uh, the people in the United States. You know, do you know like uh, less than like, less than 20% of the people in the world are, are got that shot, you know? Uh, so right now I just saw it in the Hilda Morning Report and it says that as of this morning, 68.1% of the U.S. population has received at least one dose, which is, now you got to remember something. When you read stuff on all of this, they're all truncated. It's all bullshit. It's all lies, okay? So you have to take that and you have to cut that in half and then take half of that. So if they're at 30%, I'd be really surprised, you know, and people are beginning to wake up more and more and more. Now, the left is going to go full tilt at us. They can't help it. They have to. They have no choice. They are all in. When they lost in uh, uh, Virginia, what did they do? Biden didn't even call the governor over there to thank, you know, to congratulate him. But do you think that the governor over there wanted the president, the, 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 the resident of Washington, of D.C. to call him. I don't think he gave a rat's ass because he proved his point, you know. Uh, where's Black Lives Matter and where's all these all these uh, equality groups that the first black woman became a lieutenant, a woman who came from nothing in Jamaica became the first lieutenant governor who busted her butt to get to where she is. Where are they now, you know? But what they did is they had to double down on their racism and all those isms. And with that, I want to show you, I'm going to close this up with this. It's going to take 12 minutes. Have you guys seen the, the series on the isms? You're going to love it. Okay, let me go ahead and pull this up. Somebody turned me on to this the other day. It's fantastic. You, I'm going to show you one episode. It's about 12 minutes. And check out this channel. It's really cool. Let me go into my history right here. And let me pull up these isms right here. Ism, 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 ism. There we go, the deadly isms. All right, so I'm going to play this right here. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and play this. All right, I'm going to look at you guys' uh, comments over here while I do it. All right, let's go ahead and do this. What does the best form of government look like? How should we organize society? What does the best form of government look like? Does it come from the right or does it come from the left? Maybe this left versus right thing never made any sense in the first place. Throughout history, we have experimented with one ism after another in hopes of coming up with a system where people could cooperate and not kill each other. Maybe we've gotten it wrong this whole time. Maybe there's a better way. Welcome to the deadly isms. We're taking on a big one right now. We're going to talk about socialism. There's a growing movement in America hoping to resuscitate the reputation of socialism. Leftists from the very young to the almost comically old are telling us that it's an ideology rooted in compassion, inequality, and justice, and not something we should be afraid of. Democratic socialism means guaranteed economic rights for all Americans. With the right policies and the right people to implement them, America can finally become a paradise of economic and social justice. It's important to recognize that most advocates of socialism are motivated by compassion, the same compassion we all share for our fellow men and women. Most people prefer wealth to poverty, freedom to slavery, equality to oppression, and peace to war. We just differ on how to get there. Unfortunately, compassion alone isn't enough to solve complex economic and social problems. A socialist economy requires leaders with enough knowledge to direct the activities of millions of citizens, and with the hearts pure enough not to be corrupted by an immense amount of political power. Is such a thing possible? Looking around at socialism as it's practiced in the modern world, it doesn't look good. This guy's so smart. In modern America, there's a disconnect between what socialists say they want and the kinds of policies they propose to get there. Perhaps the most recent and vivid example of socialism in practice comes from Venezuela, where Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro implemented a socialist economic program that turned one of Latin America's most prosperous countries into a hellhole. Today, even wealthy citizens face the threat of starvation. These guys thought they were smart. 
but they couldn't know enough to plan the economy effectively. It's just not possible. And they couldn't resist the inevitable corruption that comes with godlike power over the people. But back in this country, socialists remain undeterred. When they say socialism, they're not thinking of Venezuelans dying in the streets. They're thinking of the happy and prosperous people of Denmark and Sweden and Norway. They call it democratic socialism, oh, attempting to distinguish it from the oppressive regimes of the past. There are two problems with this argument. First, these Nordic countries are not actually socialist. Right. Second, socialists oppose the very policies that made Scandinavia so successful. When Bernie Sanders points to Denmark as a shining example of modern socialism that works, he probably doesn't realize that there's almost nothing socialist about that country. They have thriving markets and free trade and relatively light business regulations. The same is true for these other Scandinavian countries, all of which were forced to liberalize their economic policies in the middle of the last century to fight stagnation and poverty. The reason these countries are so successful is that they've embraced the effectiveness of markets and they allow them to work relatively unfettered. And while it is true, that they also have generous welfare programs, these are only made possible due to the country's small populations, the immense wealth from their oil reserves, and the strong economies that come from open markets. Notice that these countries have none of the hallmarks of true socialism. The government doesn't fix prices and hasn't seized control of private business. Property is still privately owned, and there is no effort to restrict foreign trade or transition towards all-out communism. So if Scandinavia isn't socialist, what is Bernie Sanders really asking for? Think about some of the things socialists have asked for in the United States. They want a universal health care system run by the government, not private providers. We must provide a health care system that provides quality health care to every man, woman, and child in this country. That is precisely what Medicare for All is all about. They want free college education for all. I believe that today, when we talk about public education, it should include free tuition at public colleges and universities. Can Financed and effectively controlled by the government. Bernie wants to reduce foreign trade and international migration, and they want the government to extend its control to banking and farming and even the internet. These certainly don't sound like the proposals of someone looking to imitate Denmark. They do, however, closely resemble the steps taken to bring Venezuela to its knees. In order to protect workers, Hugo Chavez nationalized agriculture with the result that the country quickly ran out of food. The Venezuelan government runs the healthcare system, which has condemned many citizens to involuntary confinement in hospitals and asylums that have become grisly chambers of horrors. The situation now is desperate. Chavez's successor, Nicolas Maduro, closed the border, preventing people from fleeing the country. Without free markets, there's not enough wealth in Venezuela to pay off its debts or support any kind of welfare programs for the poor. All the government can do is print more money until it becomes so worthless that you need a wheelbarrow full just to buy food. That is, if there were actually food to buy. In order to really understand socialism, you have to go back to the origins. The term socialism was first used by Marx to explain the transition from capitalism to communism. It was never meant to last, and was just a stepping stone on the road to a stateless society with no profits and no prices and no property. Socialism helped accomplish this by allowing the government to seize control of land and factories, set all the prices for goods and services, and kill off anybody who didn't think that was such a good idea. You heard that right. Violence was always an explicit part of Marx's plan to bring about his communist vision. In fact, there's no other way to do it. Socialism requires that everybody in society get on board. As long as you have moms and pops trying to run private businesses and earn profits, the whole thing falls down. So the original socialists had no choice but to employ violence against dissenters. That's why party disloyalty was such a serious crime in the Soviet Union, and why socialists today favor a closed society where it's difficult to escape. Throughout the 20th century, we saw regime after regime put this theory into practice, as Chairman Mao, Pol Pot, Stalin, and Castro turned their brutal oppression of the citizens into the pursuit of the socialist greater good. So if socialism in practice has always been a violent and miserable failure, why are people so eager to support it? 
What do they know that these socialist revolutionaries didn't? We often hear that the regimes of the past weren't really socialist, and that socialism done right hasn't been tried. Implicit in these claims is the idea that today's politicians, given the same tools as Stalin and Mao, would be able to produce prosperity instead of poverty. If we just put the right people in charge, everything will be fine. But even if you're arrogant enough to think that you're smarter than Castro or Pol Pot, do we really want an economic plan with so narrow a margin of error? When free markets go slightly wrong, you get a slightly less prosperous economy. But when socialism goes slightly wrong, millions of people starve. That's right. Is that really a chance we're willing to take? Words change over time. The concise encyclopedia of economics defines socialism as a centrally planned economy in which the government controls all means of production. I'm pretty sure that's not what young people mean when they use the word. As near as I can work out, socialism today just means working together to solve problems. And there's nothing wrong with that. Cooperation and community have always been cornerstones of society, and dare I say it, liberty. But it's important to be honest about the lessons of history. Socialist policies, however good they sound on paper, don't lead to happiness or prosperity, they lead to starvation, poverty, misery, and oppression. We can have an open conversation about which direction we think our country should go. We owe it to each other to do just that. But we have to be clear about the words we use and what we actually mean when we talk about socialism. If the word still means what it always has, surrendering our freedom to a supposedly all-knowing, all-benevolent government and expecting it to take care of us, then we should know that going in and not be surprised when the results aren't quite the utopia we were promised. So one of the things, when, when, one last thing on socialism right here is that, you know, see, it sounds very alluring to young people because you've got young people who, where did they grow up in? They grew up in homes being taken care of for the most part, you know what I mean? They're being taken care of. All their needs are being met. You know, they were, as a child, they were being fed. They were being clothed as a, in, through their formative years as a teenager. Basically the same thing. Maybe they learn to get a job, you know, and they'll earn a little bit money. But still, the roof that's over their head is paid for. Then they go out and they get a grant. So they'll get, their family will take out loans to send them through college. So these people have never worked as a young person has never worked. So it sounds very alluring to them looking into the future. But the truth of the matter is society, unless there's a free market involved, can never evolve and can never progress into what we have today. Yeah, capitalism is rough, man. You either, you know, you make it, you're either a worker or you're, or you're not working at all or you are a, a, a business owner. But the whole point is, it's the ingenuity, it's the creativity that arises out of the type of system that we have. That's what makes it so wonderful. Socialism, you come up with a good idea, the state already owns it, the country already owns it. We already know this. So, you know, socialism is the on-ramp to communism. That's all it is. It's not, a, you know, it's not a highway. It's not a, you know, passing road or anything like that. It's not a stop-off point. It's just an on-ramp to, you know, to someplace really, really bad, you know. Um, uh, Red Dawn also mentioned, uh, yeah, the squabble, Belarus, uh, and, uh, over the, the border immigrants. These globalists are paying them this money to get these people to these borders. I got to tell you, man, Poland, they don't let anybody in, you know, they don't let anybody in at all. And if I was uh, running a country like that, you know, like I'd be doing the same thing and they don't, have, we don't hear anything about the, the, the. Covid, we don't hear anything about that over there. Okay, they do not allow immigration immigrants to come in. They're trying to get past their borders, and Germany is responsible. Germany is responsible, I believe, a lot for what's going on here in the United States as well. You know, I think it has to do with their debt, the, a debt that they owed to us as well. You know, yeah. Next time we speak, next time we get together, I want to talk about the trucking uh, industry and the fact that truckers are being made to take the shot now and what it's doing. And I'm going to bring Gary on, uh, who's on over here. Uh, Gary, he's, he's a trucker, and it's something that he's really having to deal with because he may have to get the shot in order to keep his job and feed his family. You know what I mean? Like, uh, 
that's something that we really, really need to talk about. It's I've been looking into a lot, Gary, and I want to bring you on, man. Set it up in the next couple of days, and we'll definitely get it done. You know, uh, I didn't. I saw it when you wrote me the other day, and we and I just haven't gotten back to you on it. I've been just trying to do my research. That's all. You know, I've been to Cuba. All right, they all hate their gu- absolutely. Why would they love it? Their cars are still from the 1950s. Nothing has progressed there, Sean. Nothing. It is stuck in the 50s. Right there. I mean, it's beautiful to look at in some ways because we look at it as nostalgic. It's interesting to us, but we wouldn't want to live there and live under that. Absolutely not. These people want to be free. You know, our kids, okay, kids, I've got to run out. All right. Yeah, you got it, man. (laughs) Not a problem, my man, Brent. Always always good to to see you. I'm going to wrap it up anyway. But um, we... We'll figure it out, guys. You know, I'm glad that you guys thank you so much for coming on, hanging out with me. Um, I've been wanting to talk. Maybe we, if the verdict comes in for Kyle tomorrow, we'll go on tomorrow night. We'll talk about it one way or the other. I truly hope and pray, man. We send our prayers out to him that uh, it does well. Uh, a lot, there's a lot of exciting things happening, and there's a couple of things I want to talk about as we move forward as well. You know, it's got to go another way. You know, we got to get better. We, we got to do better. And we will. I'm not even worried about that. Got to be a trucking company that's not forcing. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. You know, I always want to be a truck driver, long haul truck driver. Yeah, maybe it's because I like to be alone. Could be. Could be something like that. You know, God bless America. Charlie Mike, brother. Yes. Thank you so much. And with that, <laughs> practice proper farm safe take dig at all times. Charlie Mike, I'll see you guys on the next one. Don't forget to hit me up. Shot him by car. Drop it off. Drop that real shit. Smoke What up? Tell him like it is. Smoke Drop it off. Talk that real shit. Smoke What up? Tell them like it is. Smoke Drop it on Talk that real shit. Smoke 